Welcome back to the Focus 15 for Faith and Business with C Suite for Christ. I'm Erin Harrigan, Christian business coach to female believers who wish to break free from business as usual. And my topic today starts with this question Is fear a choice? You know, throughout the entrepreneur world and business expertise that we tune into, we are told to feel the fear and do it anyway. And fear is a very natural response. In fact, our brains were created to help us understand fear so that our bodies would respond when we were in a situation where we were threatened. As I was researching this idea of fear being a choice, the reason that this came up is because so often the women I work with have some kind of a fear. Maybe it's a fear of doing business differently. You know, they've been high achievers and they've been relying on their own strength for so long that there is a fear of letting go, a fear of losing control, if you will. Maybe you can relate to that. They also have a fear of what people will think as they start to shift the way that they do business. You know, will people sort of give them the side eye, like, why aren't you the same ambitious go-getter that you used to be? And the truth is that for most of us who are ambitious, it is a God-given gift. You know, God made Saul ambitious, but he was using his ambition to persecute instead of the way God wanted him to use it. You could say that God made Saul ambitious, but he didn't make him to do business as Saul saw it. So when he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus, it's when Jesus shifted everything and he became Paul and used his ambition in the way that God intended. And the same is true for us. But sometimes as we step out to do the work that get, God has given us to do, or we change direction and finally allow Jesus to take the wheel, we have a fear that people will look at us differently. Maybe we have a fear that we won't show up as strong and powerful as we used to. You know, is it weak to allow the Lord to lead me? And, and what does that even look like practically? And those are the conversations that I have with many of my clients. And so this idea of fear got me thinking, do we have a choice in it? I mean, yes, our brains naturally do it, but don't we have a choice to go with that fear and let it overrun us versus allow the peace of the Holy Spirit that's already in us to take the lead? So as I started to do a little bit of research on this, I am not a brain scientist. Science is not my first uh, subject at all. In fact, when I was studying to get my degree in sociology, the reason I picked sociology is because it had the least amount of math and science. So there's a little bit of background for you. But here's what I found. Fear is defined as a fundamental emotion promptly arising in the context of threat and when danger is perceived. Fear can be innate or learned. Innate fears are hardwired into our brains and they serve to keep us safe from harmful situations. Fears of loud noises or fear of falling. Uh, animals learn to fear things that hurt them or make them uncomfortable. So we can have innate fears of pain, of heights, of rapidly approaching objects, and even threats that go far back in our history for, for snakes and spiders, right? <laughs> and wouldn't the enemy love us to fear him as he was the serpent in the garden that caused all of the fall of the world, correct? But here's what else this says, is that when our... um when fear arises, our amygdala activates areas involved in preparation for motor functions, such as fight or flight. It triggers release of stress hormones and the sympathetic nervous system. And it also in studies shows that how we experience fear has to do with the context in which the fear happens. So when our thinking brain 
gives feedback to our emotional brain and we perceive ourselves in a safe space, then we can quickly shift the way that we experience fear going from fear to enjoyment or excitement. And I would even add to that piece. Now, one more thing that I found in my research in um, an April 3rd, 2018 article in Inc. Magazine talks about the eight successful mental habits to defeat fear. And those eight habits are don't figure things out by yourself. Hmm, That sounds familiar. (laughs) Be real with how we feel. Be okay with some things being out of our control. Practice self-care. Be conscious of our intentions. Focus on positive thoughts. Practice mindfulness and train our brain to stop the fear response. Friends, here's what I find so fascinating about business literature, about literature such as this. Do all of those things remind you of, of texts that you've read? Of course they do, because all of that is in the Bible. And so often our secular world doesn't choose to read the Bible or or they don't choose to accept that it truly is the textbook for our lives and business. So all of those things, those eight habits that the Inc. Magazine article talked about are all in the Bible. And here's the thing, friends, the Lord knew that we would have fear. I mean, he created our brains. He created the way our amygdala works, right? But he also gave us 365 verses about not fearing. One literally for every single day. So I want you to think about, before I give you a few verses around this, what are the things that you fear in business? And are they innate or are they learned? Here's the thing. We don't fear physically falling in our business. We don't fear spiders and snakes in our business. We don't fear heights in our business, right? So these are not innate fears. The fears that we often face in business are absolutely learned. Maybe they were learned that time that you got up for show and tell in third grade and someone snickered. Maybe they were learned that time that you had to walk up on stage to accept an award and you tripped up a little bit. Maybe they were learned because you stepped out boldly and took a risk in your business or even in the corporate world and you your ideas were shot down or someone else took credit for them. These are all learned fears. And so therefore, if those are learned fears, then we have a choice of how we respond to them. We have a choice to let the fear overwhelm us or to step forward in the strength and power of the Holy Spirit and do what he's given us to do. I read a book by Max Lucado about anxiety. And one of the things that he said, I'm going to paraphrase, struck me so deeply And it was that when we are looking too far backwards into our past, that is where depression comes from, right? We're looking back into the past. We're longing for a time or a person or a situation, and that can get us spiraling in deep depression, which is fear. We may fear that we'll never have that again, or or we'll never experience that again, right? But when we look too far into the future, And we're trying to project and speculate and calculate and plan that that can cause anxiety. I don't know about you, but my anxiety tends to be more active than a depressive state. See, I can look back at my past and see what God has delivered me through. And even as I trust him and I know that he will do it again, I still face anxiety. I still face the fear of, well, what if it doesn't go this way? Or what if it goes that way? I can very easily get myself spiraling in speculation, wondering about all the different ways that God will bring me that next client, or I'll get that next opportunity to speak, or what my income will look like. Friends, this morning I was reading in Jude, and one of the things that struck me 
is that there is there's a lesson in the Charles Stanley Life Principles Bible that came forward in Jude. And it was that when we obey him, he has full responsibility for everything we need. When we obey him, he takes full responsibility for everything we need. If that is true, then how do we stop fearing the future? How do we stop worrying about the past? How do we choose to not let the fear overtake us, to not let it cloud our judgment, to not get us drifting in discontentment and doubt and distraction, which is exactly where the enemy wants us. But if we're spending too much time speculating and wondering and worrying, we know we can't add a day to our life. We know from Jesus's sermon that the flowers don't spin in toil, wondering when they'll get water or they'll get nourishment. And the birds don't wonder where their next meal is coming from. But see, we have been trained by a broken and fallen world and trained by business gurus that we have to move and shake and make things happen and keep going and all the hustle and do it harder more often to keep that fear at bay. I don't believe that we have to choose to break down a brick wall of fear. I believe that we have a choice to recognize the fear, to recognize what's causing that fear, and then turn to scripture and remind ourselves of God's truth. So let me give you these three key verses. Certainly there are so many more that you could go to. But these were the three key verses that really spoke to me as I was putting together this episode for you. Isaiah 41, 10 says, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. When you feel the fear when you feel the anxiety of what's coming next or getting up on that stage or teaching that class or talking to that client or all of those things, remember this verse that he is with us, that he will strengthen you and help you and uphold you with his righteous right hand. In Hebrews 13, 6, which is quoting Psalm 56 verses three and four and Psalm 118 verse six, it says, so we say boldly with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Think of Hebrews 13, 6. When you're nervous about getting up and giving that presentation, when you're nervous about having that conversation with your potential next client, when you're nervous about having a courageous conversation, perhaps letting a client go or ending a contract, what can mere mortals do to you? And then finally, the age old do not worry verse in Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You have a choice in the midst of that fear to take that fear to the Lord and allow the peace that surpasses understanding to flood through you. These three verses, and certainly all of the others in God's truth, tell me that we have a choice when it comes to fear, that we don't have to just let our brain run roughshod over our lives and our businesses, that we can recognize that fear and recognize what's causing it and take it to the Lord and say, Lord, free me from this and give me peace in any of these three verses or many others that may be useful to you. Friends, I believe that we don't have to give in to fear. That while fear is natural and that it can be innate, that so many of the fears that we may have in our business and our work 
are learned. But what if instead of doing business as usual, we chose to do business God's way? We chose to cover our business with Christ and we chose to opt out of fear by tuning into his word. I always say at the end of my podcasts that I pray for and encourage you to tune out the world, tune into God's truth and turn up your focus. And the same is true right now. You have a choice, friends. You don't have to give into that fear. Tune into God's truth and let him guide you through it with his unsurpassed peace. I pray that this blesses you today. And I want to remind you that God made you ambitious, but he did not make you to do business as usual the world's way. And I'm the coach that can help you break free from that. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you on the next episode.